Also on tonight's programme... So why is the Zika virus, which most of us hadn't even heard of a few days ago, spreading so fast? How was it carried from Africa to the Americas? And more importantly, how can it be controlled? As our science editor Tom Clark reports, at the moment there are still many more questions than answers. Now, it's almost two years since the teacher Anne Maguire was stabbed to death by one of her pupils in front of her class. Her teenage killer, Will Cornick, has been jailed for life. But Anne's family have been campaigning for an independent review into her death. Today, a coroner ruled there would be a full inquest. However, this programme has learned that months after the murder, another knife incident occurred at the school. Yet rather than warning teachers, senior management apparently tried to keep it quiet to avoid damaging the school's reputation. The refugee crisis is at the heart of whether Britain should stay or go. And here, ministers have been urged to take in more refugees, in particular thousands of unaccompanied children stranded across Europe. But one council says that will put a strain on already stretched resources. Kent says the sheer numbers of migrants arriving mean children in care are having to be housed elsewhere. Meanwhile, after a public outcry in Cardiff, a firm providing asylum seekers with food has scrapped a requirement which had forced them to wear coloured wristbands. Now, a fifth sperm whale has been found dead on a Lincolnshire beach. The bodies of four others have been washed ashore since Friday. The dead animals are thought to have been part of the same pod which got into difficulty in shallow waters. The explorer Henry Worsley has died while attempting a solar crossing of Antarctica, just 30 miles from its destination. So if you Google tax deal, what might the search engine suggest? Derisory, according to a growing number of Tory MPs, as the Chancellor, George Osborne, faced emergency commons questions on the internet giant's backdated tax deal today. Our economics editor, Paul Mason, is here. So, Paul, what do we actually know about this deal? Well, they've paid 130 million more tax, in tax. 14 million of that would not have been paid other than that they've now begun to re uh, recognise some of what they do in the UK. It is not... Completely uh, complicated, but it did take the tax man nine years to, 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 to run the rule over this. Here's Google, yeah, and it, here's uh, the United Kingdom's uh, Google operation generating 6.5 billion of, uh, of uh, income. So, however, they only pay 21 million tax on that, um, and uh, they only recognise an after tax, after tax profit of 129 million. Uh, so, that in Bermuda, you can operate this thing called the double Irish. It's a uh, a, a, a tax tactic uh, that you use to play off the tax rates in America and, the, and, and Ireland, and lo and behold, you pay less tax. The Irish are so embarrassed by the double Irish that they've uh, abolished it, or they're in the process of abolishing it. But that is the system. That is the Paul, thanks for disentangling that. Uh, well, from Westminster now, we're joined by the Labour Shadow Chancellor, John McDonnell. Uh, John McDonnell, how much tax would you like that? But how, what well, percentage would you like it to pay? If you would quite like to tax big business until the pips squeak a little bit, no um, one isn't said there that. a risk? Nobody said okay, that. Okay, but if you want Nobody to tax, you want to tax that. them more. You want to tax maybe Google, you know, thirty percent or whatever. Look. But what my question to you is: Isn't there a danger that quite a few companies will leave the UK? Here's something counterintuitive for you: Would a Labour government consider reducing corporation tax? to entice the likes of Google and other big companies to headquarter in the UK so you'd at least get some of the tax they're paying. Don't you actually, you and the Labour Party, want to punish big business? When you look at the policy no, you've look. come out with... No, wait, let, me, let me ask. In the last few days, you've talked about banning companies paying dividends unless they're paying the living wage, something that was described by the Institute of Directors as completely potty. So my question to you is, the city now is predicting bumper bonuses, for example. Would a Labour government advocate cracking down on those bonuses more than just say that we did ask the Treasury uh, for a minister to come in the studio and none was forthcoming. Matt. After the break, one of the central figures of the Thatcher years, Cecil Parkinson, has died. We look back at his life. <laughs> On tomorrow's Channel 4 News, we'll be live from Sri Lanka. John has returned to the killing fields of the Northeast to find out what's happened to the disappeared and why the government is stalling on an investigation into the deaths of tens of thousands of civilians. Well, all that tomorrow, but for now, that's all we have time for. Thank you so much for watching Channel 4 News. See you tomorrow night. Good evening.